And uh, if you guys did not know it, um, this is Pentecost Sunday. And uh, Pentecost Sunday, of course, is a big Sunday in the life of the church. And this, of course, is the day that we remember in Acts chapter 2 that um, 120 believers were sitting in an upper room and they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that was also like that video displayed the birth of the church, that you, when you receive Christ, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, that you really do become a new creation in Christ, that, that, that your walk is now different, that your walk is now changed. Hey, can I ask you guys a question? Would your life be any different if you didn't have the Holy Spirit? Because there's a whole lot of people that claim to be Christians. There's a whole lot of people that claim to be filled, but can you really see it? Would your life be different if the Holy Spirit was removed? Because I'm telling you something about the early church. You wouldn't have had church if the Holy Spirit wasn't there. I wonder if today, if we remove the Holy Spirit, would we still be able to have church? Because I'm telling you, the power of the Holy Spirit, it changes everything. It changes the church. It changes you. It changes me. It changes who we are. It changes the way you walk. In fact, here's what I want to do today is I just want to um, just start with the verse, Galatians 5, 25. This is the key verse for this morning. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And today, I just want to talk to you just for a few moments on this thought, putting some power in your steps, putting some power. If we say we're filled with the power, our, is our walk showing that power? Is our is a direction of our life, is it really showing the power of that walk? Hey, would you all pray with me? Father, we love you. We thank you, God, that this is Pentecost Sunday, that this is the day that we remember the gift of the Holy Spirit. God, that you promised to send to us. I thank you for every person that is in this room. God, every person that is watching online. Father, I pray, God, that that you would just move. I thank you for the purpose that you have put on the inside of each and every one of them. God, it's not by accident that we're here. It's by your divine design that we're here. So, God, I pray that we would not waste a moment. I pray, God, that we will be changed on this Pentecost Sunday because we were here in your presence today, that we let down everything that distracts us, everything that derails us. God, and we just focus on you. I pray for that man or that woman, that teenager that does not know you. They played church long enough, but they haven't really invited Christ in. Today would be the day. Today, God, you would give us that wisdom and that worship, that that word that we need, God. Just to, just to get us moving forward, God, just to ignite that flame that you have put on the inside of us, Father. We love you, God, and commit it all to your glory. And all God's people said, amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap, amen, if you believe that? Let me ask y'all a question. Um, is anybody here a people watcher? Anybody here love to watch people? You go to the mall to watch people. You just love to watch people. I kind of am a people watcher. In fact, I think, I think watching people is more fun than watching a movie sometimes. You know what I mean? It just really is. And if you have never really watched people, Michelle and I were up in Indianapolis a few weeks ago and we happened to find ourselves at Monument Circle. And if you have never watched people, that's a great place to watch people. I'm telling you what, <laughs> you, see, you see life happening on Monument Circle in Indianapolis. Let me tell you, all sorts of life is swirling around there. You'll see people pass by walking, holding hands, and uh, they seem so in love. You'll see people pass by walking, not holding hands, arguing with each other, look like they're not. In, I mean, they are just, uh, you see people, I saw a guy carrying six coffee cups, maybe taking a Starbucks order to an office someplace. I don't know, he's juggling. You see policemen walking around. You see people walking around eating, people walking around texting. You just see all kinds of life happening, and you just can watch people, and sometimes I'll even snap pictures of people, and um, and it's just kind of interesting just to watch. But the truth is, you can sit there and watch people all day long. And you know, the truth about life really is this. You can, you can tell a lot about a person by the way that they walk. You can. In fact, when I was in college at Indiana State, I had a teacher by the name of Greta Treber, and she was from Poland, had a gymnastics background, and she, uh, and she told me that I walked like a horse. Can you believe that? She said, Travis, she, you walk like a horse. And I, was like, I think because I walked to my toes, I said, I said, thanks. I don't think she meant it as a compliment, though. I think she meant it as because she was talking about my physical walk. And I, I was like, I don't know, but you really can't tell a lot about a person by the way that they walk. You can see an attitude when they walk. You can see confidence when somebody walks, or you can see a lack of confidence when somebody walks. 
You can see if somebody's passionate whenever they walk. You can see if somebody's just kind of lethargic when they walk. You can, you can see the way somebody treats other people who are around them when they walk. Do they defer to that person? Do they? But you can see it in their walk. People who do investigative work would tell you that your walk is unique to you as your thumbprint is as unique to you. So your walk is your walk. It's, it's unique to you. So the question is, how are you walking this morning? I'm not talking about your physical walk. I'm talking about your spiritual walk. I'm talking about that walk that is being led and ordained and orchestrated by the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe that when God told us to walk in step with the Spirit, he knew exactly what he was saying. He knew that you would walk out your faith. He knew that you would walk out your identity in Christ uniquely and in the personality that he gave you. I believe that with everything that is within me. So if we were put on this earth to, to follow God's perfect plan, if we were put on this earth to walk in step with the Spirit, if we were put on this earth to walk out the love of God in our lives, let me ask you, what is your walk saying about your life this morning? What does other people say that your walk looks like this morning? Is it a confident walk? Is it a passionate walk? Is it a lethargic walk? Is it a discouraged walk? Watchman Nee was an evangelist in China. He wrote a book called Sit, Walk, Stand. And this book basically breaks down the book of Ephesians and it talks about discipleship and it talks about how to follow Jesus as a Christ follower. And um, Watchman Nee, he had something to say. He says that we are first called to set, that we are called to set in the finished work of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people that have a misconception. They think, man, I tell you what, Christianity, it's a give up religion. Got to give up that, got to give up this, gotta, can't do this, can't do that, can't do, you know, can't, uh, you got to obey this rule, got to obey this command. Let me tell you something. Please understand something. That when you become a Christian, you're not called to do anything other than sit. Esteem the cross. Recognize where would your life be without Jesus? Recognize what he did for you. Recognize that, that, you are, that you would be on your way to a devil's hell without Christ. When you esteem the cross, when you... See, a lot of people have misconception. They think that Jesus came down to this earth to make bad people good people. Let me tell you something. That is not true. He came down to this earth to take dead people and make them come alive again. Because we were dead in our sins. And then when Christ came and got a hold of us, we became alive in him. Can I get an amen? That's why Jesus came. That's why he's here. And every, please understand something, everything you do in your life, it should flow, it should come out of where you sit. It should come out of, out of your relationship with Jesus. It should come out of, out of the finished work of the cross. Everything you do flows from that. Is anybody here thankful that, that, that when Jesus came into our lives that, that, that he didn't ridicule us, he didn't, he didn't make fun of us, he didn't say, hey, this is how you're supposed to, but he was patient with us? That, that he, that he said, hey, you know what? Let me tell you something. If you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, if you have received Christ into your life, please understand you have a God that is loving, patient, kind, compassionate, but he does through every season of your life. But let me tell you something. He does call you to walk. He does call you to move. He does call you to act. He does call you to response. And then once you sit... That's when you're able to walk. That's when you're able to understand your purpose. That's when you understand the plan, really, that God has for your life. Watchman Nee had a great quote. He said this. He said, walking is the practical outworking of that heavenly position that you have here on earth. Let me say that again. Walking is that practical outworking of, the, of that heavenly position that you have here on earth. The Apostle Paul was the guy that lived that out. If you guys don't know who the Apostle Paul is, he wrote most of the New Testament. Everywhere Paul went, he, he preached to the nations, preached to every nation and every city that he could go to. And man, I tell you what, and he wrote, like I said, most of the New Testament, but he had a lot to say about walking. He had a lot to say about living out this thing called faith. And here's what he says about walking. He says in Ephesians 5, 8, that you should walk as children of light. Paul wrote in Ephesians 5, 2, that you should walk in love. He says in Romans 12, 2 and 3, do not conform or do not walk to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and his perfect will. Paul is saying as a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will show you how to walk 
but you have to walk. He will show you how to do it. He will show you how to put some power in your steps. That's what he will call you to do. We all have teachers growing up. We, but let me tell you something, my friend. The moment that you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you receive the greatest teacher that a person could ever have. And he's called the Holy Spirit. And I'm so thankful that when the Holy Spirit came in, that he loves me and he trains me and he develops me and he grows me and he matures me. Even when I mess up, he picks me up and puts me on that path that he has for my life. Is anybody thankful for the work of the Holy Spirit? It's what the Holy Spirit does. He lives within us. In the time that we have left, I just want to give you just a couple things. I could give you 10 or 15, man, but there are two things that really, I believe that the Holy Spirit tries to teach us. He, he tries to develop us when he comes into our life and to our heart. He tries to teach us these two things. Number one, he teaches us to walk willingly. He teaches us to walk willingly. We've all seen that kid at Walmart or at the mall where his parents are just dragging him down the aisle or her down the aisle and the kid's like, and he kind of walks. He's walking, but he's not doing it willingly. He's being drug. He's, uh, he's just kind of there and doesn't want to do it. Can I tell you, as we are led by the Spirit, it's important to know that none of us are forced to be a part of this. Please, please understand, I'm not forced to be a part of this. You're not forced to be a part of this. God has given you something, an incredible gift called free will. He doesn't force the Bible down your throat. He doesn't force you to be a Christ follower. He doesn't do that. What he does is he gives you free will when you recognize that you are a sinner. Then you recognize that your sin separates you from a God in heaven, but in God's love for you. Man, he died for you and he doesn't force that down your throat. He offers it to you as a gift to be received. And when you receive that gift, you understand and you say, God, I need you. And you start to receive it and you start to grow and you start to develop. And man, incredible things start to happen. Let me tell you all something, my friends. When it, when it comes to your walk with God, we are called to walk willingly, not begrudgingly, not... <sighs> Not manipulate. It's called because you can't help but do it. I have to do it. In fact, this is what James 2.14 says. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, that someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? What's James saying? James is saying if you really believe, listen, that the power of God lives on the inside of you, then there is going to be some outworking of something, fruit, happening in your life. There's going to be, it's just going to happen. It's, it's like a fruit being on, a, on an apple tree. It just happens. It just, it's something that takes place. But, but here's what I want to tell you. You have to be willing. You have to be willing. And I just want to tell you, there is power. There is life transformation. When you let the power of God work in your life and you take this incredible gift called free will and you say, God, I am willing to work for you. I am willing to do whatever it takes, God. I choose willingly to do what you cause me to do. I choose to sacrifice to build the kingdom of God. I choose to, to smile and have a good attitude at work when everybody else is complaining and griping about everything. I choose to, uh, you know, to be that person in school who says no when everybody else is saying yes. When you choose to forgive and not let bitterness grow up in your heart because, you know, bitterness is a, is a bitter root that grows up to defile many. And you understand that if you do not forgive, how can God in heaven ever forgive you? So you choose to forgive. You choose to show the love of Jesus to the people around you. You see, walking is facing your fears. Walking is getting you out of your comfort zone because it takes you to get out of your comfort zone to go talk to somebody else who doesn't know Jesus, maybe invite him to church, maybe as the Holy Spirit prompts you, maybe even to share your testimony because they're going through a difficult time and God will prompt you to say something. God will prompt you to do something. God will invite you and tell you, hey, invite that person to lunch. Invite that. And I told you guys this story before. My brother reminded me of it this past week. Because we had a neighbor named Richard down the street. And Richard was a guy that his wife died in like the early 80s. And he used to do those radio flyer airplane cars, you know. And he lived by himself for 15 years or so. Every day you'd drive by the lane to our house. To, you had to pass Richard's house and we'd wave at Richard. And Brent told me this. I didn't know this. My dad had told me a similar story. But Brent, my brother, told me this. He said, you know what, Travis? He said, one day I drove by Richard's house. And God said, my brother Brent's a very outgoing guy, 
very personal. You, he is a really good guy. And, and God said, Brent, I want you to go talk to Richard. And Brent said, no, I'm not going to do it, man. I just, he just ignored that. Man, I, but the Holy Spirit was prompting him to do it. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. And he went off and he did his own thing. Can I, t- can I tell you, please listen to me. That same day, Richard, Richard killed himself. My dad lived down the lane from Richard. My dad told me that months, for months, my dad's a very introverted guy. My dad won't say hi to him, hi to anybody. My dad don't really even care about nobody. <laughs> but, uh, but, he's just out my daddy. But it's, uh, three, he's just the most introverted guy. But my dad said he has a, he has a Harley. And he said that he was, he, about months prior, you know, before ever this took place, he said, man, the Holy Spirit told me to invite Richard to dinner. Because he just lived two doors down. Just invite him to dinner. Just because, you know, he's probably lonely. Just invite him to dinner. And my dad said no. And my dad, I'm telling y'all something. It is no joke when God puts somebody on your heart in your life. You listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. You text that person. You call that person. There is a reason why something, why the Holy Spirit is prompting you to do that. Because who, you don't know what God's going to do through that prompting. You don't know what the power of the Holy Spirit has in mind and in store when you just listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. I can tell you there's been times when I've listened and there's been times that I haven't listened. And I was always glad I listened. I was always glad that I listened. But here's what I'll tell you. You have to be willing. You have to be willing. And I believe it's not so much even about, about what we do, but it's how we do it. I don't even believe it's about where we do it. It's, it's really all about why we do it. Because here's the reason why I say that is because God is really concerned that we're for our motivations. God's concerned about our heart. People say, God knows my heart. I know it scares me to death when people say that because he does know your heart. And it's desperately wicked. Our hearts are not a good thing. Our hearts become good when Christ fills our heart. That's when our heart becomes good. Or maybe you've, in a place where you put up this wall so high and you think, man, I tell you what, God can never use me. And, and you think that, that God can never use you. And maybe you're even unwilling for God to, because you have excused yourself and put yourself in such a box. You have made so many excuses and said this and said that, that you don't think God could ever use you. You think, man, this is just the way I'm wired. This is the way my daddy was. This is the way my papa was. This is the way my grandpappy was. Let me tell you something. Not if you're willing. Not if you're willing Where's the power of the Holy Spirit? I'm telling you, the power of God can change anybody. The power of God can transform any life. Can I get an amen? That's what the power of God can do. Let me tell you, man, if you want to walk in the power of the Spirit, we have to be willing. We have to be willing to be teachable. We have to be, we have to be good listeners. Not just good responders, good listeners. And we don't listen to respond, we listen to learn. Can I I ask you a question? Are are you teachable? Are you you somebody that's that's moldable? Are you somebody that the Holy Spirit can can take and, and mold and shape into the man or the woman that he's called you to be? Let me ask it to you this way. Are you willing to learn from your spouse? Are you willing to learn from your spouse? Are you willing to learn from your coworkers? Are you willing to learn from your boss? Are you willing to learn from your teachers? Are you willing to learn from the people that teach and preach at this church? Are you willing to grow? Are you, are you willing to learn? <laughs> Is that you? Because let me tell you something, my friend. If you're not willing to learn, your walk with God and your impact for God will be hindered. And you don't want your walk to be hindered. Can I tell you why? Because if your walk is hindered, guess what? <laughs> There's territory for you to take because God through your personality can only reach a certain amount of people because he's gonna work through you to do it. And guess what? But if your walk is hindered, if you're not willing to listen and grow, if you let pride set in and say, I know it all and throw your head back and lift up your shoulders and walk away and think that you're a big shot, let me tell you something, my friend. You will not accomplish what God wants to do in through your life. It will not happen. So we don't want our walk to be hindered. We listen to learn. We listen to, to receive. We listen. Even if everything isn't true, we still listen. 
But if some things are true, we listen and we take it because that's on us. Can I tell you, there's been some times that I've listened to my wife and I'm glad I did, but there's been some other times that I haven't listened to my wife and I wish I would have. Because we might have done something and she had an idea, I have an idea and we'll, we'll move forward and I won't listen to her because I'll get stubborn and prideful and I won't do it. And I'll just do it my way. And guess what? It'll cause problems. It'll cause issues. And then we'll turn around and do it her way and it'll just go smooth as could be. You know, strawberry pie and whipped cream. I mean, ew. <laughs> okay. Am I the only one that has learned a lesson that way? Raise up your hand. Come on, somebody, Tristan, help me. Somebody, come on, Steve. Yeah, all right. Amen. Yeah, it's just like, we, are, are you willing to listen? We don't want anything to hold us back, man. Does anybody believe that God has more for your life? Does anybody believe that God wants more for you? Let me tell you something. I believe that. But here's what I also believe. You have to be willing. You have to be willing to put in the work. You have to be willing that the Holy Spirit use you and be a part of your life. The Holy Spirit will teach you some things. The first thing he will teach you is to walk willingly. But the second thing that the Holy Spirit will teach us is to walk in wisdom. Proverbs 3.21 says this. I love this verse. By the way, can I just tell you, there's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs, one for every day of the month. And if you are not reading Whatever that proverb chapter is, that day of the week or the month that it is, let me tell you something. You are missing out on the wisdom of God. Today is the sixth. Let me tell you something. We all ought to be reading Proverbs chapter six. Tomorrow's the seventh. We ought to be reading Proverbs chapter seven. Why? Because it's wisdom for your daily walk with Christ. It'll take you four minutes to read that chapter. And let me tell you something. It will set your path right in the morning. If you just do that. Here's what Proverbs 3.21 says. My child, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you and an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. And when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Anybody want some sweet sleep? Amen. Have no fear of sudden disaster of the ruin that overtakes the wicked for the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. You know, when a toddler is little, They may learn to walk, but they don't know how to walk in wisdom because when a toddler first learns to walk, what they'll do is they'll take a step and they will fall because they don't know to take another step and then they'll get up and they'll maybe take two steps, but then they'll learn. Can I tell you, wisdom says, you know what? I know that life is full of ups and I know that life is full of downs. I know that life's full of good times and bad times, but I also know wisdom, wisdom says this, that I know that my God is with me every step of the way. He's with me in the highs and the lows. He's with me in the good times and the bad times. He is with me through it all. Would anybody say amen? Because that is who our God is. Or maybe you're here today and you tried to do it on your own because that's easy to do in our world. Let me tell you something, wisdom, wisdom. I don't care who it comes from ultimately, but wisdom comes from one source. When you want wisdom in your life, my friend, please understand, wisdom comes when we seek the face of God. Wisdom comes when we apply what God gives to us to our lives. And you say, Travis, you know what? You just don't know what I've been. You don't know what I've done. You don't know my family. You don't know my upbringing. You don't know how I was. Or you don't know all this stuff. Let me tell you something. You might be going through the crisis of your life. You might be facing the biggest mountain of your life. Let me tell you all something. Please get this. There is wisdom that's waiting for you right now. There is wisdom from God waiting for you right now. What you have to do is receive it. What you have to do is apply it to your life. Wisdom is understanding that when you go through a difficult time that you're not going to be here forever. Wisdom is understanding that, that yeah, your life is moving down a path, but wisdom is also understanding that as your feet are moving down that path, so is time. Time is also moving. Wisdom says, you know what? Wisdom understands that I've only got so much to accomplish what God has called me to accomplish in this life. So the question that I have for you is this. Are you walking or are you waiting? Are you walking or are you making excuses? Are you walking or are you waiting until it's convenient? Because I believe that God has put a journey in front of you, in front of every person in this room. And wisdom says, take the next step of faith today. Wisdom says, I'm not gonna waste a minute of my life. I understand that there's a path in front of me, but I also understand that I've only got so long before that path is over. 
I realize once that path is over, it is over. Please understand something. I'm not even looking for this. And every time I prepare a message, I keep on coming back. Life is short. Time is brief. Life is a brief. Life is a vapor. You know, we're a flower that blooms for a little while and then it fades to the ground. Life is a, it's like a clock ticking. That's what life is, my friend. That is what life is all about. And the truth is this, even if we say, yeah, man, when time get right, guess what? Then I'm going to get on that path. Let me tell you all something. You don't have any guarantee of that because that's why the Bible gives us verses like you can't even boast about tomorrow because you don't even know what that day will bring forth. You don't even know you got this afternoon, friend. You have no idea what God will have, what will happen in your life. None of us do. And I don't say that to discourage you. I don't say that to put fear in your life. I say that to speak faith into your spirit, hoping that you'll take a step of faith today. Hoping that you'll start to believe it. Hoping that you'll start to believe as you walk in power that God will move in your life. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know who holds tomorrow, my friend. I don't know what Monday holds, but I do know I've got right now. I do know on this Sunday morning, I can lift up my hands and worship to God. And I can say, God, you know what? I'm not focused on my problems. I'm focused on the problem Savior. God, I love you with an everlasting love because I know I got right now and that's what I'm going to do. Hey, what are you doing in the right now? What are you doing in the here and now? What would people say about your walk? Because walking in wisdom is living your life with the understanding that you have a limited amount of time. And when that time is over, it's over. It's over. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. He says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run? We all run. We all have lives but only one gets the prize, run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. This is who we are called to be. This is the church. This is Christians. These are people that are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Is anybody here ready to train? Is anybody here ready to get on this path that God has for you? Is anybody here who would say, man, I am ready to walk. I am ready to take advantage of the time that God has given to me. Because let me tell you something. If you would say yes today, here's what I tell you. Now is the time. And the world is waiting, and the world is watching. The world is just waiting for the church of God to rise up and stand up and be the church of God. That's what he wants us to be. I'm telling you, the church, when you put power in your steps, God moves and things happen. Wisdom said, man, don't put all your energy, effort, and time in things that will just fade, rust, and eventually just be destroyed. Wisdom said, put power in your steps right now. Wisdom says, walk in a disciplined lifestyle so that you can make an eternal impact. Wisdom says, you know what? I want to devote, I want to get up a half an hour early so I can read the word of God every day. That's spiritual discipline. That's wisdom. That's, that's, that's the word of God. That's the Bible. Wisdom says, I've got a problem in my life. And guess what? I'm going to seek the wisdom of God and I'm going to seek his face. I'm going to seek his guidance for this answer. I'm going to stay on my face in front of God on my knees as long as it takes before I get this answer. That's the wisdom of God. Wisdom says, I'm going to allocate my temporary resources to make an eternal difference. I'm gonna live a a generous life because I believe this. Everything God gives to me, he wants to flow through me. Did you guys realize that? That your talent, your gifts, your everything, he gives to you so that you can give to others and he gives to you so you can give to others. He gives to you, not so we can hold it and hide it and no, so you can give it away. So guess what, he'll give you more and you give it away too. You guys might think I'm crazy, but I believe the church is the hope of the world. Who else is? When I talk about the church, I'm not talking about the lights and the. I'm talking about you are the church. You are the church. And not everybody's called to do the same thing, but we are called. We are called to willingly go. We are called to be up. I believe the church is the answer to world hunger. I believe the church is the answer to to the foster care problem we got in our world. I believe that the church is the answer to the drug addiction problem we got in our community. I believe the church is the answer to the marriage problems we got. I believe the church is the answer. I believe the church is the answer to it all. 
And, we don't, and we're not the answer by criticizing and shaming people. We're not the answer just by talking about love, but we are the answer by showing love. That's how we're, yeah, thank you, babe. That's how we're the answer. That's how people listen. We speak truth, but we do it in the right way. We do it in the right tone. Can I tell you, when you don't do it in the right tone, when you think, well, only Republicans are Christians, let me tell you something, you ostracize 50% of the population. You realize that? Folks, we are called to love Jesus above everything. We are called to represent him above it all. That's who we are. That's who we represent. My home is not this place. I love this place, but my home is heaven. That's where we are going to. That's our final place. That's where we end up, and we are there for eternity at all time. But we've got such a time right now. We've got, we got a place right now. You've got time now. I've got time now. We've all got time now. Man, when we walk in wisdom, when we walk in this truth, when we walk in step with the Spirit, man, you couldn't believe what God wants to do in your life. Can I tell you something, just to be perfectly honest with you, it always won't line up with your flesh. It won't. Guess what? God will tell you to do some things that your flesh will say, don't. But you'll be amazed what God will do in your life when you walk in step with the Spirit. You'll be amazed what God will do in your workspace when you walk in step with the Spirit. You'll be amazed what God will do in your school system, whenever you just walk in step, you'll be amazed what God will do in your church and in your community. But here's the question. Are you willing to walk wisely? Are you willing to apply it to your life? You know what's hard sometimes as a pastor is when I walk into a room, there is no way I could possibly hit on every need in this place. People come here with all sorts of issues, but here's the beautiful thing about the power of God. When you seek after God, you can specifically bring that need to God. You can get specific about it, and guess what? God will hear that prayer, and God will answer that prayer. God will respond to that prayer. And I don't know what you're going through, but here's what I want you to know. God sees, and God hears, and God knows. And you don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be overwhelmed. Do not listen to the lies of the enemy that says it's always going to be this way. No, you don't listen to the lies of the enemy that says, hey, you know what? This is the way it's always going to be and this is the way it's always going to be. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy that says who you are saying that or stepping out and doing that. Let me tell you something, my friends. In one touch, in one moment, the light of Christ could shine down in a situation and turn it all around just like that. Because that's what God does. But I also know this. I also know the, the truth about life is this. We all have moments when we feel like you can't walk any longer. That the, that the pain is so heavy and so dark and so real that you don't know if you can ever take another step. And can I tell you, that's one of the main reasons God's given us to church. Because when we feel like that, when we go through those times, it's the church that responds. It's a church that comforts us. That's what happens. And maybe you haven't ever felt that way. I pray that, man, in your time that you haven't felt that way, just develop and grow in your strength in God. Because the, Jesus is, says very truly, man, that in this world you're going to have some trouble. And we're all going to have seasons of this life where you would just say, man, if, if, if God doesn't touch my heart, I'm not going to be able to go. If God doesn't move... There's nothing else for me. And God hears, and God knows, and God sees, and God responds, and God delivers, and he never leaves us or forsakes us. God is always with us through every season of life. Can I get an amen? But there are these times where it's really heavy, and it's really hard, and it's really difficult. And we think, man, I just don't think I can make it. It may be fear that paralyzes you. It may be grief that paralyzes you. It may be the wound of a friend that you thought would never turn their back on you. And they did that. And now it paralyzes you. You think, man, what in the world's going on? Here's what I've learned about life. And even being a Christian, that just when you're willingly go, and even when you walk in wisdom, it does not block or does not shield you from the pain. 
But what it does do is it causes you to lean into Christ even more. It causes you to trust him even more. It causes you to understand that God is already on the other side of that mountain, that God is already already on the other side of the answer to that problem, that God, as you walk in faith and as you trust in him, God will always see you through that problem. God will always see you through that issue. And when I talk about walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, please understand, I just want to reiterate, I'm not talking about walking alone. I'm talking about finding some people who walk in godly wisdom and seeking them out and finding them and letting them comfort you and, prov- and provide for you and, and speak truth over your life. Because the truth is this, we really do need each other. We do, man. When you weep, I weep. When you mourn, I mourn. When I, when I celebrate, guess what? We celebrate when... We do better together. Can I get an amen? That's what it's all about. But the truth is, I go person to person, just row by row, and we're all, all just dealing with stuff. If I went row by row and I started to ask you, hey, man, what are you dealing with? What's going on in your life? There'd be people, if they were honestly truthful with me, there's people in this room that have a great big smile on their face, look good, and they are dealing with an addiction issue that you can't even believe. And it controls every aspect of their life. There's married couples here that are, that live in a hollow marriage and their life is crumbling. They're sitting together, but man alive, they're, they're really fall apart. There's other people that will smile, but man, they're dealing with a grief that's just overwhelming. It just, it just haunts them. But then there's other people that on the other side of the coin, man, they're on the mountaintop, man. Life is good. They just got to raise. You know, there's people here that maybe just lost their job and they're looking for a job. The bills are piling up and they don't know how they're going to pay the bills and get it done. But on the other side, there's people here that have just got a brand new job and they, or they just got a promotion and man, everything's going great for them. There's people here today that maybe just, uh, maybe they just found the man or the woman of their dreams and they just think, man, this is going to be awesome. Maybe there's people here that just had a baby that you've been praying for. I'll pray for you. Amen. But that, yeah, maybe that's just where you're at. That's just where you're going. I don't know what season of life you're in, but I do know this, whether you're on the mountaintop or you find yourself in a valley, God has created us to walk together, to celebrate together, to go through it together. And you might say, man, Travis, that sounds great, but how do I really walk? I mean, I've been saved, I've been a Christian, but how do I walk in this power? How, How do I walk like this? Two ways, two ways, through worship and through the word. You walk in the power of the Holy Spirit through worship and through the word. When you, let me tie this together. When you walk willingly, that's worship. That's when you release yourself to God. That's when you worship God. You you put your, your focus not on this stuff and these circumstances or that problem, but you put your focus on your Savior. You put your focus on the problem solved. You put your focus on Him. That's what you do. You worship Him. You say, God, I magnify your name. God, this problem has no authority over my life. The enemy has no authority over my family. God, I claim victory in Jesus' name. That is who you are. God, I walk in your power. And what it does is it causes you to walk willingly. But secondly, you want to walk in the power of God. You guys already know what the word is. The word is this. The word is how you walk wisely. It's how you walk wisely. Psalm 119, 105 says this. The word is a lamp for your feet and it is a light for your path. When you can't see your next step, It is the word of God that lights it up. It is the word of God. It is the word of God that gives you strength back. It is the word of God that gives you authority. It is the word of God that your spirit rises up on the inside of you. God will give you a word. And guess what? You start to see that path more clearly than you ever have. If you don't know how to walk in power today, my friend, listen to me. You don't need 100 people. You don't need to listen to 1,000 voices. You need to listen to one voice. You need to listen to the voice of God. You open up your Bible. You lift up your voice and you worship God and you start to get your focus off of all this stuff and you get your focus on him and you begin to walk. You begin to willingly walk. You begin to willingly serve. You begin to have new eyes and a new heart, new ears to be able to hear and see things that you've never heard and seen. And you activate your faith. As you read the word of God, I'm telling you what, the word of God reads you. It's like looking at a mirror 
And you'll start to see that the word of God is true and the word of God is for you. You start to believe that, man, I truly am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I didn't think I was ever gonna get through that issue, but man, God got me through. You start to believe, man, I can do all things through Christ, not because of me, but because of him. You start to believe greater is he that's in me than he who's in the world. You start to believe that no weapon that is formed against me shall ever prosper. You start to believe this truth. You start to understand and you start to live life and filter things that when you face a mountain, or maybe you're on top of a mountain, guess what? You walk this way through worship and word. When you feel like giving up, you walk this way. When you feel like you don't know which way to go, you walk this way. When you feel like you can't take another step, you know what you do? You pull out your worship and you pull out your word and you walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what you do. Because he puts a power in your step. He puts a power in your step. Does anybody believe it this morning? That's what God does. Are you walk, what does your walk say about you? Is it a lethargic walk? Or is it a walk, man, I've got a purpose. I got, God's got a plan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get moving. And the enemy will throw things at you along the way and you say, God, not today. Devil, not today. I love that t-shirt. Devil, not today. And you get out your word and you believe the truth of the gospel. You understand there's highs, lows, goods, bads. You understand that my God's gonna be with me through it all. Hey, would you all pray with me? Father, we love you. God, I thank you for every person in this room. God, I thank you again for just your power. I thank you for your presence. God, I pray for every person, every circumstance, and every problem that everyone here is facing, and they think it's overwhelming. God, it's not. God, you see all, you know all, and God, we lay it at your feet right now. And God, there may be a man or a woman, a boy or a girl who has never received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They they are just kind of living life, just kind of just floating down the stream of this world. And God, you brought them here today, not as an accident, not as an invitation just to hang out with a friend, but you brought them here today with a divine design, a divine purpose, so that they could understand they need you more than they need air in their lungs to breathe. God, they need you in their life. I just want to give you just in this moment, just an opportunity to respond to the voice of God because God moves in quietness. God moves whenever we're still. God moves whenever we're open and listen. And God says, today's the day, now's the time. You say, what do you mean? The day, today is the day that you accept this free gift. Like I said earlier, he doesn't manipulate you. He doesn't force it down your throat. When you understand that you are in need of Jesus, that you're in need of a savior, that your sin separates you from God, and you let down that pride and you let down that wall and you say, God, fill me with your presence. Fill me with your power. He does. He does. And the Bible says that if you will call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. I want to give you that opportunity right now. Maybe you've drifted away from God and you just say, I need to say that prayer as a recommitment. You can choose today to make that recommitment. You can choose today to believe again. He gives you that opportunity right now because our God is patient with you. If that's you, you'd say, man, Travis, I need to do that. Just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, forgive me my sins. I repent, I turn from my sin, and I turn to you. I ask you right here and right now to save me, fill me with your power, fill me with your presence. Do a new work in my life. Make me into the person, the man, the woman that you have created me to be, Lord. And don't let anything hold me back. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Just with every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm gonna count to three. And when I hit three, if you said that prayer, if you meant it in your heart when you said it, that's what God's after, man. If you meant it when you said it, when I hit three, I want you to raise up your hand. You're putting a stake in today. You're saying, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to claim I'm a Christian. But I said that prayer today as a first time commitment or a recommit. When I hit three, raise up your hand. One, Jesus Christ loved you so much he died for you. Two, he was buried and rose again. Three, just raise up your hand right now. Raise it up. Your heart. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I see hands up. I see hands up. Amen. I'm just going to invite everybody just to stand up right now. Father, we love you. God, we thank you for your incredible and amazing love for us. And God, I know sometimes in the church it's so easy for us to lose our path, lose our way. It's for easy for us to get tied up and tangled up in the ways of the world. And, and God, you don't want us to live like that. You want us to live free. You don't want us to live with 
just burdened down by every problem. But really, every problem is an opportunity for us to draw closer to you. So God, I pray that we do that right now. Every problem we have, every problem, every circumstance we're facing, God, it's an opportunity, God, for you just to, just to show up in a big way. So I pray, God, we would just release all this stuff that weighs us down to you, Lord. I pray, God, for that person, God, that's battling a life-threatening illness. God, we release it to you. We pray healing over that person's body. That person that is jobless, needs a job, we pray for an open door. For that married couple, we pray restoration. We pray forgiveness. God, you create a marriage to be a beautiful thing. As we, as we, both of us as a husband and wife, follow you with our whole heart. I pray for that couple. God, I pray for that person that's battling an addiction. God, I pray for the family members, God, that just are going through relationship things, junk and stuff that just kind of hold us back, God. We just release it all to you, Lord. Just have your way, God, as we just respond to your voice. We thank you for your presence right here and right now, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you got anything you want to pray about today, first of all, man, we had four people raise their hand for salvation. Could we give the Lord a hand clap for that? I, we would celebrate that, man. Man, that's awesome. If you're here this morning, and man, you just want to just pray about something. Brother Trent's up here. I'm up here. We'd love to pray with you. Other people would love to pray with you as well. If you just want to come and pray by yourself, you can come to this side of the altar. Come with a friend. Come with a family member. Just come by yourself, but just come. Just come as the Holy Spirit. Just lead you. Come. Our praise team's going to lead us. Just respond to the Holy Spirit's voice as they lead us.